All right, a ton of breaking news tonight. I promise we'll get it all in. It's a lot. We start with this. President Trump is slamming the Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, for relying on an Obama-appointed Inspector General to probe the massive FISA abuse scandal and not DOJ lawyers who actually have real prosecutorial power. Now, the president tweeted earlier today, quote, why is Attorney General Jeff Sessions asking the Inspector General to investigate potentially massive FISA abuse? Well, will take forever, has no prosecutorial power, and already late with reports on Comey, et cetera. Isn't the IG an Obama guy? Why not use the Justice Department lawyers? Then he writes disgraceful. Then the Attorney General, well, he responded. He put out a statement. It reads, quote, We have initiated the appropriate process that will ensure complaints against this department will be fully and fairly acted upon if necessary. As long as I'm the Attorney General, I will continue to discharge my duties with integrity and honor, and this department will continue to do its work in a fair and impartial manner according to the law and the Constitution. In this case, I believe the president's right. Now, we know from two Republican memos and the Schiff memo, the Democratic memo, that the Clinton bought and paid for dossier, filled with Russian government lies and propaganda, was used to spy on the Trump campaign. We know that. We also know for a fact the FBI and DOJ lied to a FISA judge about Clinton and the DNC financing the dossier. And these memos show us that this FISA application it never mentioned Hillary or the DNC that she controlled. They never told the FISA judges. Now, that is called maliciously lying and purposely deceiving FISA court judges and justices. And here's what's worse. The FBI and the DOJ, they did it four separate times. One for the original warrant to spy on Carter Page, and then that warrant was renewed on three separate occasions. Now, we have also discovered that, yes, the Trump campaign was, in fact, spied on, and here's why. When the FBI got approval for that FISA warrant using her bought-and-paid-for dossier, it also gave them access to every one of Carter Page's old emails. That means old text messages. That means old phone calls. Everything which dates back to when he was a member of the Trump campaign. And then it gets worse. Remember, Politico reported that the former top White House advisor, Steve Bannon, he may have even been picked up on FBI surveillance of Page. Now, this is about immediate accountability. This is about the rule of law. If you did this at home, I promise you, you would be investigated and probably be on trial by now. And government officials, in the end, I predict, are going to go to jail over this. So it is time, knowing the facts as we have them, which are incontrovertible and overwhelming, that the attorney general has to do his job, serve the American people, and, yes, the rule of law and the Constitution. And Jeff Sessions, if he's not up to the task, if he wants to create a two-tier justice system, well, we have other options. How about just appoint a special counsel? Because that's other breaking news tonight. And all brand new, Republican congressmen, they are demanding that Jeff Sessions do that very thing. Appoint a special counsel to investigate what is massive and widening FISA abuse scandals. These lawmakers also want the special counsel to probe the corrupt Clinton email investigation. Remember the fix was in? They were writing the exoneration before investigation and how the Trump-Russia investigation even started. Now, we just explained all the key details about Obama-era FISA abuses. Now, here's what we know about the so-called Clinton email investigation. We know the fix was in from the beginning. We know it was predetermined Hillary was not going to be charged, even those that she had on her email server, which was unsecure in a mom-and-pop bathroom closet, and she deleted emails, acid wash, smashing blackberries with a hammer. All of that... They're all major crimes. They would send every one of you to jail out there, everyone, of course, not named Hillary Clinton, for a long time. It never happened. Why not? Now, James Comey, Trump-hating FBI agent Peter Strzok, other top FBI officials, they started writing the exoneration, gave her the get-out-of-jail-free card before doing their investigative work. And then there's, of course, the issue of how the Trump-Russia probe started. Here's the information we currently have. The Trump-hating FBI agent Peter Strzok, who was a top counterintelligence official, signed the paperwork that actually kicked off this entire Russia witch hunt. Strzok, his FBI girlfriend, mistress, uh, and biased partisan, Lisa Page, they're as corrupt as they come. And they talked about an insurance policy with who we think is the former FBI deputy director, Andrew McCabe. Remember that? Insurance policy. Insurance policy in case of what? Donald Trump winning, the American people deciding they want him as their president? We also have new at this hour. Hillary Clinton has zero shame. 
She is actually pretending tonight to be outraged. She's feigning outrage and is accusing President Trump of surrendering to the Russians. And she lashed out earlier today in a tweet writing, quote, I say this as a former secretary of state and as an American. The Russians are still coming. Our intelligence professionals are imploring Trump to act. We will he continue to ignore surrender or protect our country? OK, Obama knew in 2014 this was going to happen in 2016. He did nothing. And Hillary, you couldn't be a bigger hypocrite or more partisan hack. Do you really have the audacity to lecture anybody on Russia? Did you forget that your failed reset button that you handed over to your counterpart? Or Uranium One giving 20% of America's uranium to the hostile regime of Russia, the hostile actor Vladimir Putin? Or maybe it was because you and Bill, oh, let's see, you doubled his speaking fees in Moscow? And then $145 million flowing right back into your foundation, the people involved in that deal? Or about how you supported Barack Obama who did absolutely nothing, even though he was warned again and again that he had to stop Russia election interference? Oh, and Hillary, there's also the dossier and the evidence of real Russia collusion in the campaign of 2016 and how you and the DNC that you controlled forked over over $12 million for Russian lies to lie to the American people on the about to go into the ballot box on the eve of an election. Really? Just a little bit of free advice, Hillary. When it comes to Russia, maybe you just want to keep your right to remain silent. And also tonight, we have even more breaking news. It involves a very big question, and here it is. Okay, how do four Pfizer judges that we now know tonight were lied to by the FBI as it relates to the Clinton dossier, how do these judges feel about being lied to? Well, tonight we have new information to help answer that very question. Sarah Carter reporting that Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court presiding judge, her name is Rosemary Collier, she told Congressman Devin Nunes and Congressman Bob Goodlatte in a February 18th letter that documents they are requesting from the FISA court can actually be obtained from the DOJ with the approval from the White House. Now, in her letter, this is where it gets interesting, she writes that requests for FISA court information related to the approval of a FISA warrant to spy on Carter Page, quote, present novel and significant questions. Novel, significant, meaning new, never happened before, significant, yeah, this is pretty profound. And the judge adds that the court does not have any problem with the executive branch releasing any material from the FISA court to Congress. Here's my takeaway. Sounds like this one judge and probably the other three are now saying we know pretty darn well we were lied to, we were manipulated, but we have to now go through the proper process to get the truth out. Now, that is a major development. We'll be following this story very, very closely. Also brand new tonight, that clock is ticking for the Obama administration, those officials, to answer Congressman Devin Nunes' 10 questions about the dossier. The deadline for the House Intelligence Committee, the chairman said, is Friday at midnight. And what Devin Nunes is trying to find out is what these Obama officials knew, when did they know it in regards to this phony dossier. Now, we know that the Obama, FBI, DOJ, State Department, members of Congress all either had the dossier or were briefed on this phony dossier. What Nunes rightly is seeking are answers to how these officials found out about the dossier, who told them about it, and then what they did with that information. Now, the Wall Street Journal, their editorial board, they're raising some very important, serious questions and making key points about the dossier. For example, the editorial board points out that if Hillary Clinton and the DNC, they're paying the 12 million bucks for the dossier with Russian sourced lies, then Fusion GPS would have almost certainly shown them what their money bought. Now, former Senate Minority Leader Harry Reid also referenced what was in the dossier. Remember this point? He sent that letter to James Comey at the end of October 2016. This was only days before the election. Clearly, the dossier was not some closely held secret in terms of officials all across the Obama administration obviously knew about it. Harry Reid knew about it. So it's now time for all of them to respond and tell us, you, we, the American people, what did they know and when did they know it? This dossier scandal stretches well outside of the Obama administration. And 20 months after Christopher Steele gave this phony fake news dossier to the FBI, believe it or not, 
we now have evidence that so many liberals, two years later, are still trying to prove it's true. Russian, hookers, Ritz-Carlton, Moscow urinating on bed. They are that desperate. The Washington Times has put together a full list, Rowan Scarborough, of all the liberal players in this scandal that are actually hoping they can verify anything in this Clinton bought and paid for dossier. Here's a couple of examples. BuzzFeed, remember they published the dossier. They're being sued for libel. They hired a retired FBI cyber expert to try and corroborate these lies. Fusion GPS, also being sued for libel, is, is also trying to still verify the dossier. Former British spy Christopher Steele, he's locked in a huge legal battle. His lawyer are reportedly they're trying to confirm what he wrote in his own dossier, his own fake dossier. Now, verifying the dossier is what BuzzFeed, Fusion GPS, Steel should have actually done in the first place, not to manipulate the American people just a couple of months before the election. They never bothered to verify it because to them it didn't matter. It was always about smearing then candidate, now president, Donald Trump. Now, finally tonight, a major report from the Daily Caller. This is interesting, and we're going to follow this very, very closely as it relates to James Comey's very questionable leadership at the FBI. And the Daily Caller is report reporting, quote, the Department of Justice's inspector general sanctioned at least 14 FBI agents and officials for a range of improper sexual acts since 2014. And most of the conduct, yes, it occurred during former FBI director Comey's term. And here's what's most troubling. The Daily Caller reports that the DOJ Inspector General, we're waiting any day now, Michael Horowitz, found that Comey actually attempted to interfere with the investigation. We reached out to James Comey for comment. Shockingly, he never got back to us. I bet he's probably watching. This is just another example of how corrupt James Comey really is. He's a national embarrassment. He's a disgrace to law enforcement. He deserved to be fired. And we will follow this closely. I can't wait for this book to come out because he's so sanctimonious on Twitter. TikTok.